Welcome to the Work Wonders Podcast, where we simplify HR for small business. I'm Angela. And I'm Susan. Let's dive into today's episode and see what you've been wondering about. Do you employ casual staff in your business? Well, in today's episode, we're going to be talking about entitlements specific to those employees, and it's called casual conversion. We'll cover where this came from and what it means for your business. Do you need to offer a permanent role to a casual? How many hours do you need to offer? And how do you do that? So let's get started. This is the Work Wonders Podcast. Hello. And so back in episode two, we talked about the National Employment Standards and explained that there are minimum conditions of employment for all employees in Australia. Back in March of last year, 2021... The Fair Work Act changed and that meant that national employment standards also changed just a little bit (laughs) and that change was specific to casual employees and it covered three things that we now see in the National Employment Standards or NES. The first of those is the definition of casual employment. So there's now a clear legal definition of what is casual and that is a person who accepts a job offer from an employer knowing that there is no firm advanced commitment to ongoing work with an agreed pattern of work. So, Angela, I'm thinking that pretty much describes what we've always thought to be casual. It does, doesn't it? But it's kind of formalising it, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. And sometimes it's easy to think about what it's not. So if we think about part-time or full-time, they've got a designated amount of hours a week. They know when they're coming into work and when they're going to be paid for that. Um, And it's sort of the same every week. Whereas casuals, it could be on one week and off the other. It could be no hours one week and... 20 the next sort of thing it's very different yeah so that's what we mean by no firm advanced commitment Mm. to ongoing work okay so then the second aspect that's changed in the NES is the requirement to use a casual employment information statement Mm -hmm. so you're already hopefully giving any new employee a fair work information statement but if they're a casual employee they now get two statements Mm -hmm. And the additional one is just for your casual employees and rightly named the Casual Employment Information Statement. (laughs) (laughs) You can get this by downloading it straight from the Fair Work Ombudsman website and you should give it to your new employee as soon as possible after they start. Uh, We'll put a link to that in Mm. the show notes. Yeah. But by far, Susan, the biggest change has been a really clear pathway for casuals to move into permanent employment at that 12-month anniversary of them starting. And that's what we mean when we talk about casual conversion. There's eligibility requirements for that. There's exceptions that apply and processes that need to be followed. But it can either be offered by you as the employer or you could find that your casual employee, if they feel they're eligible and they are, uh, they can come to you with a request to be reviewed for casual conversion. As Susan said, it started back in March of 2021. So you might be thinking, why are we talking about it now? (laughs) Well, there is that 12-month mark um, of anniversary. So if you think about it for people that started in your employment from March of 2021, well, it's around about the time that it'll be 12 months from that. So now's about the time to start to think of, has it been 12 months since they started and does this apply to them? So look, let's start to break it down a little bit. The first stop is to think about whether the employee is eligible and to do that they need to have obviously worked for you for that 12-month period so that's a continuous period, no sort of start and stop employment in between that. Uh, Their hours need to be regular and systematic. Lovely term, (laughs) we'll help you understand what that means Um, but that needs to be a regular and systematic pattern of hours over at least six months. So six months, not 12 months? Yeah, just six months. And then obviously a reasonable expectation for that to continue. So if you're going to go down the path of offering them permanent, you want to know it's going to be for a reason that they're going to actually keep doing those hours. Mm -hmm. Now, Susan, we know (laughs) that there's no one definition to what regular and systematic means. But can I ask you, how would you describe it? Yes. Well, uh, (laughs) thanks, Angela. (laughs) Great question. (laughs) (laughs) So it doesn't mean frequent, uniform or even, you know, a large number of hours. Uh I remember I came up against this when thinking about my own casual staff in terms of whether we were eligible for JobKeeper. Uh 
So the sort of thing that is a good test are whether the hours form a pattern. So it might be the same number of hours each week or the same number of days each week or working on particular days every week. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does, yeah. So it can Uh, be different for everybody. Yeah, so there's that part of it. So that's the, you know, systematic, regular systematic Mm -hmm. part. But there's also the reasonable expectation that that would continue. Ah, yep. So it needs to be something that's going to keep happening. Uh, But what if your business doesn't have a clear pattern or roster, especially when we've just gone through COVID lockdowns and all sorts of turmoil that's played havoc to those? Mm -hmm. If there is no clear roster or or pattern Mm -hmm. of employment, then you can still establish evidence of regular and systematic employment. If, for example, you offered shifts at similar days or times um, that the employee had previously worked, and also if the employee worked regularly enough that it could no longer be regarded as occasional or irregular. Ah. So theoretically, it might only be two days a month or something. Mm. But if it's the same day of the month, you know, yeah. the 14th and the 28th of yes. each month, then that is obviously regular. And it's important to note probably before we go too much further that if you're a small business employer, and what we mean by that is someone with less than 15 employees... There's no obligation for you to initiate this yourself. So you're not the one that actually has to do the work to assess if your casual employee is eligible. But you could have eligible staff that could come your way. Like I said in the beginning, they might come to you requesting this um, assessment. So it's still important you know the process. Hi, it's Susan here. Are you struggling to stay on top of your HR-related documentation? You need a system. Balance at Work are agents for the age factor, a people management system designed specifically for Australian SMEs. To find out more, you can contact me via the Work Wonders website, workwonderspodcast.com.au. So if you have a casual employee who's been with you, with you for 12 months, what do you need to know to be able to respond if they make this request? Mm. Well, there's the two criteria. So firstly, I'd be looking at the hours. So take a look back over your pays or timesheets, whatever's appropriate there. Look at particularly the last six months because we want to identify whether in that period there has been that regular systematic amount of hours. So is there, like Susan was saying there, something that is regular, some sort of pattern? If there's a yes to that question, you then want to go on to, well, is there an expectation that that needs to continue? Does that job, is it going to exist into the future and and those hours? Am I going to continue needing that? Has it been a short-term need? Is it just filling a gap while someone's away or is it more permanent, that sort of thing? You'll also need to let them know in writing. So okay. even though they're the ones coming to you asking for that that piece of work to be done, mm-hmm. you do need to actually write that to them, what your, your end result was. So does that mean if they meet those criteria, you have to offer permanent employment? Very good question. (laughs) You only have to offer that um, if your business is in a position to do so. So let's take a big breath. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. What would be, you know, in a position to do so? Yeah. So what I mean by that is it it needs to not be a detriment to you. So if you have to jump through some hoops and to offer this person the hours that are reasonable to expect to continue, you need to make changes to what other people are doing or other sort of arrangements to make that happen. That's obviously going to be unreasonable for you as a business to have to do that. So absolutely, that wouldn't be necessary if that was your scenario. Some other examples or reasons why your business might not be in a position to offer a permanent role, if you know that position's not going to exist, like I said, or those hours are going to reduce again, or it's not going to be the same days and times, that's not easy to predict or work's changing. Obviously, COVID lockdowns have had an impact um, on businesses. So if that has had a significant impact on the person's hours in that six month period you're assessing, that might not be a true indication of what your business is like maybe you've had a boom during COVID lockdowns for whatever reason and the hours have gone up but that's not really what's going to happen long term. So what if I can offer a casual conversion what Mm -hmm. does it look like then? So it should be based again on those hours that you've um, tracked down and you've assessed and what that pattern was prior to obviously offering the conversion. So for example if a person although they're casual has been working more like full-time hours say they're doing you know five days a week for at least that six-month period you're more likely to give them a permanent full-time role. 
Whereas maybe you've got someone that has come and done two or three days, you might find an average somewhere there and offer them a permanent part-time role at maybe those two or two or three days a week. So it's about following what they have done in that pattern. Okay, so say I have an employer today who comes in and says, look, I know that there's this option and I'd like to convert. What mm-hmm. happens next? Okay, so in that case, you need to respond to that employee in writing and there's a need to do that within 21 days. So you'd use that criteria of having a look at their hours, understanding if there's a pattern. As a business, can you do that? Is there a reasonable expectation for those hours or need for that to continue? And then you'd go ahead. And if you're going to make that offer, you'd pop that down in writing, what that's going to be and present that to the employee for their consideration. If though you're going to decline in making an offer, it doesn't work for you, that's okay. You'd still pop it in writing in that 21-day period and explain why. But that employee does have the right to come back to you in six months' time and ask again. And presumably you would inform them of that? Yes, yeah, Yeah. you could, yes. It'll be in their awards so you could share that with them. Here's another scenario for you. Sure. <laughs> Say I have five employees uh-huh. on my team and the one that has been with me the longest is actually a casual and started on 1st of April okay. 2021. Would I need to offer them casual conversion? Okay, so 1st of April 2022 is when you'd be thinking about it for them. Mm -hmm. Given that you've only got five employees, no, because you're a small business employer. So unless they request it, you don't have to do anything. Okay, well, say there was just one employee who had been working with me since January last year and Mm -hmm. asked if they can then go Mm part-time. Okay, so we'd use those same criteria, understand if they're eligible, but you do have that option to decline. So if you were in a position to do it, go ahead. But if your business isn't in a position or the job doesn't require it long-term, then no, you can decline it. Then let's look at the case of a larger employer Mm -hmm. with 150 employees. Mm -hmm. What do I need to do? Okay, well, what I recommend there, obviously they're not a small business employer, so they do need to be on top of it. You do need to be the one to action it. Um, Obviously, informing your staff is a really good thing. Let them know, or you might have already done that uh, back in March of, of 2021, but letting them know that this change has come about why you're doing this piece of work. But I'd be popping reminders in your diary for when each individual employee's 12-month anniversary occurs. Uh That way you know that that's coming up and they they need that alert, you know, that 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 work's been done. Um, And then obviously you go through that same process we've been talking about, about the hours, the regular pattern and uh, the need for it to continue. And then you'd follow up in writing. So just to be clear, the cutoff Mm -hmm. for a small business is 15 employees. Less than 15. So if you've got one to 14 employees, you're a small business employer. If you've got 15 or more... You aren't a small business. And that's based on headcount, not full-time equipment. Correct, yeah. Lot to consider there. Lot to consider, yeah. (laughs) Well, we hope today's episode's been helpful for you, especially if you employ casuals in your business. And we hope that, you know, from this episode, you've got an idea of how, when and why Mm -hmm. you should offer casual conversion and what you should do if somebody asks you for it. And also, what are reasonable grounds for declining casual conversion if someone does request it? And you can find the show notes for today's episode on our website and we'll be sure to pop any links in there to the Fair Work website so you've got more information uh, to take it further for your workplace. Thank you for listening to the Work Wonders podcast. Hit subscribe now so you never miss an episode. And if you enjoyed today's, why not tell your friend and maybe even leave us a review? So what have you been wondering about? You can pop onto our website, workwonderspodcast.com.au and let us know. We'll talk to you again soon.